Hey everybody, this is Rusty again with Collector Auctions. Today we're going to do a little bit different kind of video. Normally you'll see me doing CGC unboxings, but today we're going to actually go over some of the books I'm going to get ready to send to CGC. Uh, most of these will probably be in a, I'll probably do a 9.6 or 9.4 pre-screen on these. We'll see how they go. I clean and pressed every one of them myself. Some of them are going to probably be better than a 9.6. Hopefully some 9.8s out of this. Some of them may go down a little bit. So I may protect myself by, as I said, doing a 9.4, 9.6 pre-screen. To be determined, we'll figure that out right before I get ready to send them out. But hey, let's get into the books. Now before I start doing these, again, guys, you're used to me asking us hit the like and subscribe button, support the channel, leave comments. I'd love to know what you think of the books that I'm going to show you today. Do you think these are great books to send out? Do you think I make a mistake on these? It's going to be a little hard to show you the the work I've done on these, but as I said, I clean and press everything myself. I think they're all going to do really well. All right, first up right here is Daredevil number 254. This is the first appearance of Typhoid Mary, full appearance, I should say. And this is a real nice book. This is my own personal copy that I bought back in the day. And some of these books are going to be from my personal collection that I've collected since when they came out. Some of these are going to be from recent pickups, whether they're eBay, uh, most likely from the Baltimore Comic Con that just happened recently as well. But 254, this one came out really nice. There was no significant damage, some spine ticks that all pressed out very nicely hoping for the best on this one. All right, next up is Daredevil number 132, and I think this is the second appearance of Bullseye. It's not the first appearance, it's the second, so it's not quite as, a, as valuable, but still a really nice book. I, clean again, clean and pressed everything. This one's got some damage over here. There is definitely a, at least one tick that color breaks. So I'm hoping for it the very, least a 9.4 but hopefully a 9.6 on that. That's a, that's a really nice book right there. Alright, next up is Daredevil number 150. This is the first appearance of Paladin. Uh, not, I was never a big fan of the book at this point but these are some books that I picked up. I don't know if I actually picked this up at the time or I picked it up a few years later when I went back and was picking up a few back issues and everything. But uh, it actually came out, pressed out really nicely. Again, it's not going to meet a 9.8, but it's going to be very, very close. So hopefully a 9.6 on that. Alright, next up is a much more important key, and a book that you will recognize from me sending out in a previous submission that I got back ungraded because it didn't meet that 9.8 pre-screen threshold. I thought it, it, it met that. I thought this was... Not, I wouldn't say sure bet, but I thought it was going to come back to the 9.8. It came back as a 9 point. Actually, it didn't come back. It came back ungraded. Um, so I put that one back in the press, worked on it a little bit. I think I've got a really good shot at this one. At the very least, in this submission, uh, hopefully get at least get a 9.6 on it. All right, next up is another one of those books. I didn't buy this back in the day, but I did pick it up years later probably in the early 90s when I was going back when I was working for the first time and I actually had some money. These books were not very expensive at the time. I mean, literally, you go in there and pay a, a few bucks, two, maybe four bucks, and pick up these issues. I remember picking up long runs. I, I think I picked up most of the run to this series. I picked up a bunch of Master of Kung Fu. I picked up Tomb of Dracula. Just large runs that I was paying two, maybe three bucks an issue for. And yeah, some of them were in a little bit rough shape, but most of them were in pretty decent shape. And this one was in really nice shape. I had had it for sale raw, but didn't have a lot of takers. So I pulled it out and decided I was going to give it a clean and press and see what I could get this graded as. But very nice. There's no, There may be a little bit of rub on the corners, but overall it's really sharp. I think there was a slight crease on the back that I rubbed out as best I can. So that will, my guess is that's going to knock it down a little bit, but I'm hoping for a 9.6, but I probably expect more of a 9.4 on something like this. All right, this is a recent comic, a Baltimore Comic Con pickup. This was Infamous Iron Man number one. I had 
sent my own copy in the CGC. I ended up getting a 9.6 on it, and I did a lot of work to get that 9.6. I, I was very happy with that, considering the crease that was down here in this black area that I managed to get out, but got a 9.6 on this. When I saw this at the comic show, I picked it up at a pretty decent price. I'm really thinking this is going to be a 9.8. There is nothing that I can really see that's wrong with this book. But again, I press and clean every one of my books these days when I get ready to send to CGC. And I expect the best every time I send and do this. And I expect, the, uh, expect a really good grade on that. Now here's another one that I had submitted previously in a 9.8 submission. I thought it was really clean to begin with, but Infinity Gauntlet number one. I thought it was a clean copy. I thought it would have come back as a 9.8. It failed just like the Marvel Secret Wars number one did. So again, this one went back into the press, cleaned it up some more. We're going to take another shot at it. Even at a 9.6 on something like this, I feel like there's going to, there's still value in this book. I'd still be happy with that. All right, next up is Mighty Thor number 339. This is the third issue of Walt Simonson's glorious Thor storyline with Beta Ray Bill. Third appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Uh, I've already got the 337 and 338 back. I got nine sixes on both of those. Those absolutely just gorgeous copies on both of those. And I want to get this one graded to add to that collection. I want to be able to present all of these, put them up on the wall. Uh, they all three need to go together. I, I absolutely adore that storyline and the artwork. This is a beautiful copy. It pressed really well. There was no significant damage. I'm expecting, hopefully, at least a 9.6 on this one, if not a 9.8. All right, now here's an interesting issue of... Fantastic Four number 52. This is a facsimile. Mm, it's more of a reprint, actually. They didn't... I'm not sure quite what this was. I just always knew that it, it didn't... Look, it never looked that good. And why was that? And it looks like I think what they did was they actually reproduced this from a real comic book. So it ends up being very dark. And when you open the pages, you'll notice that the pages look a little gray. And that's because they took a photo of the newsprint an actual newsprint from an actual copy of, of the comic and i as again i never thought much of this book but then i started looking at the values on this and this this is a crazy valuable book and how can i not send it in and anyway it pressed out really good i think i've got one tick down there but who knows they may have photographed that tick as part of the reproduction on this so it's a little hard to tell if i had a couple copies of this maybe i could discern if what was a real issue and which wasn't uh, a real problem that is anyway this is going in i'm hoping for a nine eight on this one all right let's move over to another run of comics here um big avengers fan as most people might know from some of my videos i talk about the avengers all the time but here's an issue. I never actually had this one. Uh, they had expanded the Avengers storylines into different books so much, I just couldn't keep up with buying everything. But this is Mighty Avengers number one. And this is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau. I believe is Photon in this. Or is she Spectrum? I never can remember which one it is at this point. But um, this, she had been around for years as Captain Marvel. And as everybody knows now, Captain Marvel is former Miss Marvel, Carol Danvers, and anyway, this is her first appearance. I found this at the Baltimore Comic Con, picked it up for a really, really nice price considering what this is. It did have some damage over here. I went back, worked it, I think I got it out. This one has a real shot at a 9.8. Alright, continuing with the Avengers, or the different Avengers, I found also at the Baltimore Comic Con, Avengers number 6. And if I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe this is the first cover appearance of Kate Bishop as Hawkeye. I think, am I wrong? Is she named Hawkeye in this issue? And then this is her first cover appearance of that. Uh, I had sent this book out in my own personal collection to get graded. It came back as a 9.4. It was one of my huge disappointments in my own pressing ability. I don't know what I missed on that. It, at the very least, a 9.6, but it came back as a 9.4. And 
Never did get the greater notes on it, moved on from it. But when I saw this issue, I was walking out the second day of Baltimore Comic Con and a dealer had just popped up in an empty spot, threw this up on the wall and I took a quick look at it. Price looked really good, the book looked really good. So I'm taking another shot with this book right here. And here's another more modern book. This is New Avengers number 11. And this is also, I picked this up at Baltimore Comic Con. I haven't even pulled this out of my own PC. I have this book. I just haven't pulled it out of the collection yet. But I bought this at Baltimore Comic Con. I know at the, that point, everybody knows that Ronan, at this point, I believe, turned out to be Echo. Echo is going to be featured in Marvel MCU. She's going to, I don't know sure what all they have planned for her, but there, she will be a character that will be appearing I believe this issue they reveal that Ronan is Echo in this issue. So this was a really nice copy. It had one spine tick over here that just, I think it's yelling out at me. It wants to be a color breaking spine tick. I know where it is. We'll see if this one can pass the grade on this. It's very least a 9.6, but I'm really hoping for a 9 to 8 on that. That's just what a gorgeous David Finch artwork on that. All right, going back to a little bit older book here. This is Avengers 257. Again, another book that I had sent out previously. I sent my own copies out after cleaning and pressing. They were they came back. I believe it was two nine sixes and a nine four. It was a mixed bag. Uh, I wasn't exactly happy with it, so I was on the lookout for this at Baltimore Comic Con, trying to find. I didn't mind putting some money into it if I felt like the book was going to grade out really, really high. This one looked fantastic. We'll take another shot at it. Everybody knows this is the first appearance of Nebula, who in the comics is Thanos' granddaughter. In the movies, in the MCU, she is the daughter of Thanos. This one also features my favorite artist team of John Bashima and Tom Palmer. And I've actually owned a couple pages of original artwork from this issue as well. And if anybody's ever interested in that, just drop me a line, let me, leave me a comment. I will maybe I'll do a video someday and I'll show you some of the original artwork that I own. But this is a really nice copy. I, even if it comes out in 9.6, I'm still not going to be unhappy with it, but trying try for that 9.8. Alright, let's go back in time just a little bit earlier than that issue. And then we've got issues... 185 and 186 and I want to say both of these were in my own personal collection they weren't the original copies that I had but the books I picked up years later once I was working had some money and I could replace issues that I had read the heck out of and these were both replacement issues at the time and you know, a little bit of glare there but this is issues 185 and 186. This, if everybody knows, this is part of the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch storyline. They introduced the Darkhold in these issues. It's part of their origin story. This is part of the feature that you see in the WandaVision TV series. And key issue, especially 186 right here. 186 is, is the key issue. I, I don't have 187 right here. I do have 187, though, in the shop it's being worked on it's being cleaned and pressed picked up multiple copies of that at the show the, that those issues will be sent out to cgc is eventually but right now these are my were my pc books just beautiful copies especially this 186 it is spine tick free over here now there is some rub up here at the top corner I think that will knock it down from a 9.8, but boy, if I get a 9.6 on this, that'll be that'll be a nice piece to have in your PC. All right, guys, the last batch of books, still going back to some of that Bronze Age goodness, is, and I think there might be, some of them might go out of the Bronze Age into more of the Modern Age, Copper Age maybe, but I think this is still Bronze Age. We've got issue 243 of Fantastic Four, and I love me some John Byrne Fantastic Four. I mean, if you turn around right here, you can tell that I've got one of the artist master editions of his artwork from that they put together from this run. And just love his artwork. But this is part of the Galactus storyline where Galactus is dying, comes to Earth, and 
that ends up battling the Avengers. Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange is there. I think there's even appearances by Spider-Man and I want to say, um, Daredevil as well. Brief appearances there. But these were from my PC, I believe. One of them, they may have been, it's hard to tell at this point. I really, it's, I've been buying so many copies of a lot of these that it's hard to tell. But both of these come out really clean. One of them looks better than the other. I do have a spine tick up on this one in this area. But this one is super clean. So, taking a shot on both of those. Those are pretty valuable books at this point. They're becoming keys, especially with the Fantastic Four eventually coming to the MCU. You know they're going to introduce Galactus. They're going to do it right this time. If anybody saw the Eternals movie, you know you can do characters of that stature much better than they did in the old Fantastic Four film they did back with Jessica Alba and Michael Chiklis. But to follow that up was an even more important key in that storyline was the next issue. That was uh, 244. And if you remember, this is where Frankie Ray, Johnny Storm's girlfriend, who has discovered to be the daughter of the original Human Torch's creator discovers, she, well, she has powers, fire powers, just like the Human Torch, but she volunteers to become Galactus's herald. She becomes the new Nova in this issue. So it is a super key issue right now. It is a very popular issue. And from what I'm finding, it is a super hard issue to find spine tick free. Every issue I have run across in the last two months has at least one or two to three, if not more, color breaking spine ticks over here. I mean, I'm not even talking minor spine ticks, I'm talking color breaking every single one. I'm wondering if it's the, if it's the, uh, the pink unicorn that you can't find. Is that the right pink unicorn? Correct me on that. I don't know. Is it it's not a white elephant? It's a pink unicorn, right? Anyway, guys, this right here has been my, this is what I'm looking for more than anything these days is this issue. So if anybody has this issue, super high grade, let me know and we can talk. All right, continuing with Fantastic Four, some other key issues. And again, MCU spec, and it's because of Kang and the Loki TV series. But I've got issue 272 right here. And... 273 and these were all from my own personal collections here I'll put these side by side there a little bit of a glare so anyway this is part of the Kang origin stories although I'm a little confused on how exactly everything's uh, happening these days but I know that this wraps into the Kang storyline that they've introduced in the MCU on the Loki TV series in these comics, the Warlord, the Time Traveler, is Nathaniel Richards. Not sure if, at that point, it's a Kang variant. I'm all confused, but you guys can correct me on that if you want. But all of these came up from my PC, my own personal collection. I bought these back in the day. They were super clean. I worked these to get the minor spine ticks out. All four of these issues are just beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous. With only maybe the mi minorest of uh, damage. But hoping for the best on all, all four of those. Alright guys, last two issues I have in this 25 book submission I'm getting ready to send to CGC is Fantastic Four number 280. And this is a minor key, much more minor than all the other Fantastic Fours that I had just presented. But there's a little bit of value to this book. It is a first appearance of a character named Malice and there is a wonderful reveal to who that Malice is and just a great battle scene between her and She-Hulk in this and she it just to let you know She-Hulk gets her butt whooped I mean every if you're a big She-Hulk fan this issue right here shows that she got put in her place and put in her place really good and just beautiful John Byrne artwork. I think uh, Jory Ord Ord Ordway did the inking on this too. But I'm, again, John Byrne artwork. Can't go wrong. Fantastic Four. And um, just some beautiful, beautiful work. I think the villains end up in this. There's uh, Psycho Man and Hatemonger, I believe. Thus, 
and you see the hate storyline that they've got here. Just absolutely gorgeous. But guys, anyway, that is it. 25 books. I'm getting ready to pack these things up. They'll probably be going out within the next week or so to CGC. And hopefully it'll come back at a pretty reasonable rate. I know a lot of the most recent orders have been being turned around within a month. Just absolutely crazy timelines. I will probably do a pre-screen 9.6 or 9.4 on this. Depends on how I feel. There, I may, I may end up changing some of this out a little bit. If I feel like a couple of those, like those daredevils, if I feel like those are going to drop down below a 9.6, Maybe I pull those out and put something else in here and make this a 9.6 submission. Uh, if you make comments before I send this out and maybe make a recommendation, I don't know. Maybe you feel like uh, I could go lower on this and maybe a 9.2 and still be safe and have a lot of value in these books. So, uh, you can reach out to me with your suggestions and advice. I'm, I'm always welcome to it. So, Anyway guys, that is it. This is That's the 25 books. Again, hit the like, subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, and continue. I hope you continue to support the channel. I'm going to continue to grow this channel, and we'll see where things go. And we'll see how these books come back, hopefully, in the next uh, month or so. So, And I'll do a video on that. We'll do a reveal. So, guys, take care. I'll talk to you later.